In this video, I'm going to show you how to use QUT Library's Quick Find to search for literature for your assignments. Before you start searching, you need to think about how you're going to construct your search. Let's take a look at an example. Here's my research question. What expectations do students have of online study in terms of course delivery? The first step is to identify the keywords in the research question. In my case, I'm going to look at the keywords expectations, students, and online study. This is a very simple search, just using three keywords related to my research question. I could come up with a much more sophisticated search using synonyms and related concepts, but I always think it's a good idea to start out with a general, simple search, first of all, to see what literature is available. This can help you work out whether you're using the right keywords and allow you to then refine your search strategy further. Now that we know what we're searching for, let's start out with using Quick Find. You can access the Quick Find interface from the library homepage at library.qut.edu.au. On the homepage, you'll see this Quick Find search. All you need to do to use Quick Find is to type in your keywords. If you're off campus, you'll notice a banner at the top of the screen. It indicates that you should log in to get more results. It's important to do this because the library subscribes to a huge range of databases, but the records from all of those databases won't be available unless you sign in. So click on the banner to sign in. You may be prompted to enter your username and password. I haven't been because I'm authenticated in another window already. Once you've logged in, you should be taken back to your search, but if you're not, you can simply go back to the library homepage and start your search again. Before you go any further, it's a good idea to scroll through your search results and look at the article titles to get an idea if they're relevant to your research question. In this case, I can see that the results are relevant. However, there are a whole lot of results here. At the top of the screen, you can see the number of results, and in this case, there's more than 474,000 results. This is way too many to look through, so I'm going to look at how I can refine my search to narrow down my results to a reasonable number. At this point, you might be thinking, why not just choose a few articles off the top of the results list? The answer to that question is that we've started with a really broad search, and we have almost half a million results. If we choose results of the first few pages of the results screens, we can't be sure that we're getting the best or most relevant or most recent information. So it's really important that we try to refine our search so that we get less results and we have some assurance that we're getting the most relevant results at the top of the results list. There are a few very simple ways that you can refine your search, and I'm going to suggest that you use just three of them. First of all, you can limit to peer-reviewed articles. Secondly, you can limit by publication type. And thirdly, you can limit by publication date. I usually start out by limiting by publication date. On the left-hand side of the screen in Quick Find, you have a whole bunch of different filters that you can apply to your search. If you scroll down, you'll see that there is a publication date slider. Now in technology, topics and research change very quickly. And in the case of my question, online learning has changed a lot in the last decade. So I'm going to limit my search to just the last five years. And I can do that by pulling the slider across. So I'm going to limit down to articles that have been published since 2010. So the screen has refreshed and I now have 199,000 articles. Again, this is too many to look at. When we're conducting research, one of the important ways to limit results is by quality. And we can do this by clicking on peer reviewed only. This will limit the results to articles that have been reviewed by other experts in the field. You can see here that that cuts the results down to 66,000 still too many to look at. 
I can also refine by format. Sometimes limiting to peer review will do a bit of this refining by format for you because it will prioritize journal articles. However, you can see here that there's still some other content that's made its way in. If we click on the more button, you get lots of options for different types of format. Now I'm going to click on journal article to limit my results just to journal articles. But remember for some topics, trade publications are going to be very important. Sometimes magazine articles will be useful, but you should note that generally magazines don't publish research findings. So let me click on journal article. So limiting by format has refined my results further, but I've still got too many articles to look at. At this point, I could do a number of different things. I could add additional keywords to refine my search further, or I could limit by study area over on the left hand side here. At this point, I'd usually look through 20 or 30 results to see if those are on track for the information I'm looking for. I can do that by scrolling down and just looking at the titles. And if I hover over one of the articles, I can generally see an abstract on the right hand side of the screen as well. So these results look pretty good. They're fairly focused on the topic I'm looking for, although some of them are a little bit left of centre. For example, this article, Rising Tides, Faculty Expectations of Library Websites. You can see where the keywords have come up in this extract from the abstract, but it doesn't actually look like it's particularly relevant to me. At this point, I could do some further refinement. For example, I could rethink my basic search up the top here, and I could potentially make student expectations a phrase, and then put in the word online, and I could put in the word study as well. I can specify student expectations as a phrase by putting the words in inverted commas or quotation marks. Now that has cut down my results significantly. I've now got 1,530 results. What we should note though is that I'm no longer looking for the words student and expectations separately. This is going to cut out relevant results, so you need to think carefully about whether using a phrase is the right search strategy. One of the ways I could get around this is by thinking about the other ways that the words student and expectations might appear in the article citations. For example, students' expectations might be one variation that comes up. So what I'm going to do to ensure that I'm picking up on that variation is to put the phrase student expectations into brackets. And then immediately following the phrase, I'm going to write OR, which is a Boolean operator, and I'll explain that in a moment. And then I'm going to write an alternative phrase, which is students' expectations in the plural. Now, this OR operator here says to the database that I want either the phrase student expectations or the phrase students' expectations. It's important to use OR rather than AND because using AND will limit the results to articles where both of these words appear. Now I do want to make sure that online study is still in the results and in order to do that I need to use another Boolean operator after the brackets and that operator is AND. That will make sure that the database brings me back something that relates to the content in the brackets, as well as these other keywords too. So let's hit search. So that has slightly expanded my results only by a couple of items, and that makes me feel reasonably confident that I'm getting a good set of results here. So I've put in alternative wording and I haven't really come up with anything that is significantly different. With 1500 results, I would probably stop now and do a preliminary review of the results. I would probably look through 100 to 200 results. QuickFind does some relevance ranking, so it's reasonably safe to go through the first couple of hundred results without worrying too much about whether or not you're missing anything relevant. 
Now you don't have to read each of these results in detail. All you need to do is look at the title. Now one of the strategies I like to do is work really quickly through the first hundred or so results and as I see things that are relevant, I will just use this little icon here, which is an add to folder icon. I can click on that and then as I progress through my results list, I will see that items are added to my folder at the top of the screen. So once I've gone through a couple of hundred results, what I would usually do is go back to my folder and then I would email myself a list just so that I know that I've got it and it's not going to disappear. And then I'd start clicking through to the articles and having a read to see if they're relevant. To go back to my results screen at any stage, I can just click on the X. Now, once you've got your folder open, you can simply click on the title of any of the articles and it will take you to the database so that you can read the full text. At this point, you've really got two options. You can continue to work with the articles that you've marked in your initial preliminary review of your results, or you can refine your search strategy to be more sophisticated to help you to find the most relevant results and to ensure that you are getting everything back that's useful. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to refine and hone your results using additional keywords and Boolean operators. If you found that you've gotten good results here from your initial search, then it's not strictly necessary that you do that further honing using Boolean operators and additional keywords. If you are happy with your results, then it's time to focus on reading the articles and making sure that they are relevant to your topic. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a more sophisticated search strategy to help you ensure that you're getting all the relevant content back. There's also another video to follow, which will show you how to use the reference list in articles you've found to find other articles that might be relevant to your topic. That video will also show you how to find what we call a known article, and that's where you've got the citation for an article and you want to find the full text. If you're happy with your results so far, then it's safe for you to skip the more sophisticated searching video, but I would recommend that you watch the third video so that you can see how to find known items.